it's Katie from String Expert. Thank you so much for joining me today with my coffee talk. Now I wrote out a list of quick tips that you should be able to do when you're practicing to help you in your overall practice and your overall playing. So let's get started with them. Tip number one is to record yourself as you're practicing. Now this is really important because we want to make sure that we are able to hear what we're doing and make sure that we're doing it correctly. And a good way to objectively do this is to get a recorder and just simply record yourself playing the music and then play it back and listen and see how you're doing. You'll be surprised. Sometimes you think you nail a note and you don't. And then other times you think you mess up a note and you actually did a good job. It's a great way of practicing and then hearing what you're doing wrong and right and getting better at it. Tip number two is to put down your cell phone, turn off your computer, put away all the electronic devices, and just be present and focused in your music. And this is so, so important to being able to play your instrument well. Tip number three is to use all of the learning skills that you would in your normal school in your practice. So a lot of times what students do is they go to school and they have all these great learning techniques that they use like highlighting, taking notes, um, writing flashcards, and then they come to music class and they forget all of it thinking that they're separate. They're not. You learn the same way in music that you do in a regular classroom. So take all those skill set, all those learning skills that you use to pass your regular classes and apply it to your string class and you'll do just as well. Tip number four is all about colors. So I love colors. I am an avid art fan. Any sort of painting or anything like that, I absolutely love. And so anytime I can get a hold of colors to make my music more interesting, more exciting, and help me pay attention to specific sections, that's what I do. Sometimes I color coordinate the notes. Sometimes I color coordinate the bowings. Sometimes I use specific colors in specific areas to remind me of specific things that I need to do in that section. It really just depends on the piece that I'm working at. So use those colors to be creative and artistic and fun and create the best possible music for you. The next thing that you should do is go through and carefully practice everything slowly. This is probably one of the most important things you can do in practicing. Practicing things slowly allows you to carefully go through the notes and make sure they're correct before going faster and faster with your playing. The next thing that you should do is mental practice. So visualizing yourself playing the music, going through each and every single note, and visualizing yourself with your instrument playing the notes. This is so, so important to your playing. First of all, you can only practice for a limited amount of time. And then secondly, there'll be times when you're tired and you need to rest your hand, but your brain isn't tired, it still wants to practice. So by giving yourself that time to mentally work through things, you're going to achieve a lot faster than if you weren't to mental practice. The next thing you should do is shadow bowing or open string bowing. So if you have a technical section where it's very difficult bowing or very difficult fingering, can't figure out what's wrong, what you can do is shadow bow or only use like, and just like this, like playing like a shadow or playing with an open string and just going through the bowing and then go through and add the notes later. So you practice everything on an open string or with a shadow and then you go back and you add the notes and it helps you progress faster because you've got the bowing squared away and you have the fingering squared away and then you put everything together. The next thing that you should do is pluck all the notes and then add the bow. So plucking the notes allows you to carefully think about all the notes and make sure that you have them correct before you add the bow. You need to listen to a lot of different recordings as a musician. So when you start a new piece, my recommendation is to purchase five or six recordings of that piece of music and listen them to them multiple times. Go through all the details of what makes that music so beautiful, what's right, what's wrong, rewind, forward, find sections that are really important to you and just notice them all and take notes on them. That's really important to your playing because you need to understand how the piece is supposed to go find specific details that you like, and inspiration for your own artistic touch on that piece of music. 
The next thing that you should do is keep track of your practice time and what you did. I typically just have a very simple practice journal or practice diary. This is very important because keeping track of myself allows me to see what progress I'm making, see what I'm working on, and notice and see the things that need to be fixed and try to achieve them. Finally, I would recommend that you practice on a regular time every single day. Set up a schedule for yourself. Make yourself accountable to yourself. If you don't have things scheduled and planned out, sometimes they get forgotten or overlooked by other activities, events, or things going on in your life. So having a practice schedule, I would say, is one of the most important things to learning to play the violin. So thanks so much for stopping by for my coffee talk today. We'll see you next time.